What up, players? It's Warboss Tape Up in its Mud. Welcome to my How to Paint a Morn Fang tutorial, part the third, final, final video. So, the first thing you're gonna need, let's run through all the paints we use Rune Fang Steel. Nihilak Oxide. It's kind of funny, I have to go through this backwards. Bugman Flow. Rackheart Flesh, uh, Dark Reaper, Administratum Gray, Othwan Gray, Rust Gray, Abaddon Black, Red X27 from Tamiya. You can also use uh, Corn's uh, Blood for the Blood God. Digital paint, technical paint, Blood for the Blood God. And Aberlin Sunset. Finally, the final color that I use is Drukai Violet. Now, I didn't uh, include this in the tutorial. This is actually the last step you do, but I forgot it, and then I saw it sitting on the edge of my table here, and I thought, okay, I'll just do it now. After you paint up everything, the Drukai Violet is really just for the skin to create this unhealthy looking bruising color. So all you do is paint like under the skin, and then uh, do a little bit of a glaze. I just put some water into it, and um, really though, if you want to do it straight from the pot, right down the center of the back here, um, underneath the arms, underneath the tricep muscle, and then get some water and turn it into a glaze. Put it on the top of the shoulder here, and it just creates a very cool looking um, mus muscly like, n tone to kind of contrast and, and uh, play with the pale color. So. That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, you can do that that little Drew Kai Violet step at the end, like I said, or you can do it whenever you're done highlight re-highlighting up the skin. Final details today. So we're just uh, highlighting up the, the tusks, the fur, the pants, doing some oxidizing effect, highlighting the chipped armor, and all that stuff. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one. Latest, please. All right, we're back, and the first thing we're going to do to start painting up our Morn Fang, get him to where we need him to be, is we are going to take some Rune Fang Steel, and we are going to paint on the highlights to the chipped metal. So what I'm gonna be doing is using a detail brush here, and basically, what I do is I start from the bottom and I look for any metal bits and then I'm just gonna try to do a very simple highlight on the edges using a feathered effect. I found that doing downward diagonal kind of brush strokes is really the best way to do it. So I'm, I'm highlighting the edges. It's gonna draw the eye to the different plates of armor and everything, and it's going to end up looking really cool. You can also do this with a dry brush, but instead of edge highlighting, you would go and do some, some highlights down the middle of the armor, or the metal pieces. And what that does is it creates a kind of brushed look to it, and I, either one of the two techniques is fine, and I'll show you what, what I mean by that in just a little bit. So. Uh, plates where I know you're going to need this uh, edge highlighting is here on the boots. The boots always seem to have a lot of good ridging and um, edges, rather, to, to paint. The back of the saddle, which we painted completely in this dark, dark metal color. And 
uh, he's gonna have some metal bits all over. So look on look on the pants. You're gonna have your your bits in the back here, like the studs, the metal hooks, any bits of of metal on the uh, that are hanging off the back. So you're gonna have like maybe a butcher knife or whatever little little bits and pieces you put on the back. So we're just taking the edge of our brush and we're feathering on the oops the effect like so. Doing it from the other side of this little butcher knife. Like so. So because this is this could really ruin the edge of your brush, you don't want to use a brush that you particularly need or care about. You probably want to use one of your older brushes, maybe a brush that you do work with on on or use as a wash brush, or if you're using a, a small detail brush, maybe a brush that you use to paint on the base of a model, stuff like that. The tricky thing is, you don't want to use a brush that's too big or else it'll possibly get onto areas it shouldn't. So like here on the on the pants, you don't want it to get onto the pant leg. You don't want to get it onto the uh, any skulls or bone but we're just basically trying to hit all the edges. Now, if you want to make any individual scratches that sometimes draws the eye and creates a really interesting effect, all you do is put a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush, and then what I like to do is do a couple of uh, slashes. So let's look at the belly plate. We'll do a different effect for the, for the uh, arm shield. So if you look at the belly plate, instead of brushing on the metal here in the front, I'm gonna make two very distinctive slashes, like someone just scraped something sharp against the, the belly plate and created these two slashes. So here I'm basically just turning the model, looking for all of the edges. Now here on the on the uh, shield arm, we'll show you that effect, or, or the uh, the brush on effect rather. Just a second. Get all these other metallic bits sorted out. All right, so let's say I wanted to do a slightly different effect. What I would do is find a brush that could be a good dry brush, either a regular dry brush or a brush that you kind of mess the bristles up on and trim short. So here, I've got my metallic paint, brushed most of it off on my hand, and what I'm gonna do is aggressively brush at an angle so it creates a look like that, where this, the silver is, you don't see the individual brush strokes. So take a look at the difference between the, uh, the hard edged here of the silver, where it's very straight on, and it's very, very obvious where that brush stroke is, and then the dry brush effect, which is more of a light, almost like powdery effect. So one is obviously, caused by lots of constant rubbing and friction and uh, use and hitting. And the other one is more uh, the, the powdery brushed on brush stroke dry brush effect is more because of uh, just like the light reflecting off of it and having maybe uh, weather or rubbed at it, something uh, constantly rubbing uh, against it or used as a as a surface for um, for constantly causing friction against something else.
Either one is okay. I could have be I could be doing that dry brush effect for the whole model. Um, it's it, definitely faster if you do that. This other method that I'm doing is a little bit oh, longer. I see there's a large focus on <laughs> I was watching a video and it just kind of froze, so I didn't think it would upload again. All right. So yeah, basically you just want to make sure that you're hitting all the angles there. Devil's Prodigy, mate, I just saw your ice bucket challenge. Fantastic. I was thinking for a second, like, oh, I should challenge Jervis Johnson or, you know, Rick Priestley or Alessio Calvatore. But I don't think it would ever get to them. <laughs> that would have been fun, though. Some real heroes of the hobby. Dump buckets of ice water on their head. Oh my gosh, did you guys see Patrick Stewart's one? Epic. Go look at Patrick Stewart's Ice bu Bucket Challenge if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Alright. So basically in this video we're just doing the highlights and the final effects. So you want to make sure you're, you hit everything. Because a, a good highlight will really, really pop on the model. And you can pick and choose where you decide to do the dry brushing and where you decide to do the uh, edge highlights. Alright. Now normally I do the most boring parts of a model first, but I think in this video I want to really do all the fun stuff first. Nihil Nihilic Oxide. Now in the old days, you used to take hot turquoise and water it down. Um, and then it was, what was it? Cabalite green or Sybarite green, and you just water it down. If you look at my old ogre videos, that's the stuff oops, that I used to use all the time. You just water it down and just put it into the recesses. Nowadays, you've got this Nihilac Oxide uh, effects paint that's specifically made for doing verdigris effects. Now with verdigris, I've always thought less is more, so instead of just doing a, a brush on over the entire model, what I'll do is hit the rivets and any areas where the metal is touching other metal pieces. I'll put just a little dab in. Uh, there are some people I've seen who do the oxid oxide effect, this verdigris oxide effect on the entire piece of metal and uh, I think it's a little bit too much it's a little too excessive uh, but rivets I think are great and any place where the uh, metal sticks out from the other piece of metal so anywhere where water would normally gather and oxidize the metal That's a funny thing because here in, in Hawaii, in our very temperate climate, we don't get a lot of this this effect naturally. So you if or at least I don't where where I've been. So I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, why why are they painting why is this like green glow on on the model in all these metallic areas? And maybe I just haven't been noticing it. Maybe it's it's here, but like I had to really look up different examples and pictures in photography books about about how the discoloriza discoloration of metal, like what it is and how it happens. Oh, thanks you guys who've been responding to all of my all quiet on the Martian front videos. Like that game is a really awesome game. The models are really cool. And seeing so much on sorry about that. Online about the new Nagash releases. Go. 
always gets tricky, it's like right at when you're doing these rivets on the weapon because you've got three different surface areas you're working with, right? You've got the the bronze that you're painting the verdigris on, you've got the uh, the verdigris color itself, and you've got the stone of the club. Alright. Boom. There. Alright, very cool. Next what we're going to do is we're going to take our dry brush wipe off all of the silver if you've used silver on it and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take Carac Stone and then we're going to re-highlight actually you know what instead of the dry brush what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a detail brush you could use either or I'm going to go with the detail brush and then what I'm going to do is paint up all of the area that was originally um, Steel Legion Drab and Carrack Stone. You could really go with either, either brush. A dry brush will help you get it done a lot faster, but I found that the precision of being able to use a detail brush works for me. I'm still like kind of picking out all of the hairs here, but uh, you could dry brush it down like this. And as long as the paint is on the edge of your brush, it'll go on real, real nice. And I'm just dragging the brush with the fur. So you can either drag it with the fur or uh, up and down or uh, vertically wise. Either way will work. You can see I'm dragging it down vertically. This is what you're going to be doing with your dry brush if you decide to do it with that. Uh, the tricky thing is when it gets to bigger surface areas, you'll see the vertical brush strokes. And that's not something you want. Which is why it's a little bit easier to do it with a, with a detail brush like I'm using. Because uh, the surface area of the brush is a little bit smaller. Alright, there you go. Not bad, not bad. Now we're going to move on to the uh, black areas, which we're going to highlight with Administratum Gray. Following the same concept. Ooh. What is this on his head? Got some, got some white paint on his head there. Uh, hold on, give me a second. I'm just going to cover that up. Now, you can go with any gray paint as long as it's the right gray paint because some, some colors that GW produced has the word gray in it but is more of a, a bluish, blue to white gray rather than a black to white gray. So, for example, Fenrisian gray. Great color, but I wouldn't use it to, to highlight anything that's supposed to be black because it's got a bluish tinge to it that works great on like blue highlighted things, but not great on anything that needs to be highlighted up from black. All right, so let's try using just for a little change of pace and to show you how different it is dry brush. 
And with the dry brush, you're going to have to use a lot less paint than you do with the detail brush. So with the detail brush, I put the paint on the edge and I was using it. It was fine. It was great. With this, you're really scraping most of the paint off and then you're just going to use the sides. I found just using the side of the brush, like brushing at an angle, like that is a lot easier. And then when you're running out of paint, then switch to using the entire front of it. But you see how, how much faster this is than using the, the detail brush. The danger is you just want to make sure you don't load up your brush with too much paint. It will save you some time though. And there you have it. Some nice highlights there. Next thing we're going to do is highlight up the tusks. Again, starting with Karak Stone. Now, when highlighting up the tusks, I'm looking for the areas that do not have the shade in them. So right here by the tusk, there's this flat area, and then there's the shade, the Agrax Earth shade that, that dried there. So I'm gonna leave that. Um, where these ridges are, I'm gonna try to highlight, highlight the ridges. But when you get to the breaks in between each segment of the tusk, you wanna leave those breaks very obvious, paint around them. Sorry if the camera kind of loses you for a second. Igor is on his lunch break, so I'm kind of doing this by myself today. Also, if you see any bone skulls on uh, hanging underneath your mourn fang, for some reason they use them as like hair clips for their mounts. So I'm just dry brushing these skulls. Okay, just about done with the tusks. If you do these strokes towards towards the tip, then it'll help. It's the easiest way to cover up any mistakes you make, is to use the correct brush stroke. Maybe I should do a video on that, using the correct brush stroke. Oh man, we saw Sin City 2 the other night. A dame to kill for. 3D. Remember when the 3D phase cra uh, <laughs> craze first hit? I was like, what? Stupid. But now, yeah, I'm loving 3D. Okay, Pallid Witch Flesh. It's our top highlight for the fangs. What we're doing is we're basically highlighting over and around the Carrick Stone highlights. So you want to make sure it's definitely not too much. If you feel like it's too much, you can just go back to your Carrick Stone, but we're basically looking for the very tips of the of the the edges. It's funny when you use a color to highlight how easy it is for that color to just take over. You don't want it to take over, you want it to accent the Carrick Stone highlight you did. So to do that, put less paint on your brush and 
wipe most of it off and then use short short strokes with your brush as much as possible so these techniques that I teach they're, they're not going to win you any golden demons but um, you might learn enough or brush up on enough good skills that I think you should have when you're painting miniatures that you can do a pretty good job when you are painting. Okay, let's go for the skulls that are around. Skulls everywhere. Okay, now we're going to take our pallid witch flesh and we're going to paint his nose. Alright, his nose. Paint his teeth. I didn't say nose, I was looking at his nose. Alright, paint his teeth. One, two, three, four. Right there. And Administratum Gray for the tusks on the back. So Administratum Gray for the tusks. You could also use Dawnstone as another great uh, color to highlight up gray with. All right, so just with the tusks, you wanna leave some shadows and kind of concentrate on the areas that the wash passed over without pooling into because that's kind of naturally where the light is going to hit where the eye is going to linger so that's the part that you want to make sure has the most highlight on it I'm using a thin brush, my fine detail brush, to get this because I'm trying to do some diagonal feather painting. I, th I think feather painting is the best because it, it get, gets rid of the hard lines. It creates f these feathered brush strokes, which when on the model used correctly and in the right amounts is really nice for the eye, especially for organic creatures. Uh, I think it's harder to pull the effect off with something like Space Marine Power Armor, but you can still do it. Um, it's just really cool to see this this feathered on effect on a living, quote unquote living, uh, creature, organic model. So, just about to finish here on the horns. Awesome. Okay, now onto the model itself. He's gonna have 
Bugman's Glow as the first highlight for his skin. Bring it back up to that warm, peachy look. And we're going to focus on the upper areas. So leave that over in flesh shading in the shadows as much as possible. The thing I love about the ogres is, is there's such big slabs of muscle that they're really easy to paint if you're using strong straight lines across the skin areas. So this is one where you wouldn't use feathering and you try to use more of a blended technique. What that basically means is pulling the paint down to the edge of the surface area as far as you can and then using the tip of your brush to feather the end of the paint into the area underneath it. Okay, now we're going to use our Bugman's Glow with just a dash of Rackarth Flesh. I would say two to one, maybe. So you want twice as much Bugman's Glow as you do Rackarth Flesh because it's a pretty bright highlight color. Or let's say just maybe not bright. It's not going to pop out. It's just very a lot lighter. So you're going to have to use it more sparingly. So a great place to experiment on is the knuckles. You can really tell, oh, it's too light. It's too dark to carry on to the rest of the model. If you feel like it's it's just right, then paint along the the fingers to the edge. And then what I like to do is work on my highlights on an area of the model that would be easy to cover. So like the inside of his forearm, uh, if it's a model like this one, who's got his chest covered, and you could use his chest, his face. At some point you should say, okay, this is the perfect amount of rack art flesh or I think I'm going to use a little bit more, at which point, point you go back to the drawing board. Once you have what you think is enough Rackarth flesh and your, your combination, your recipe is good, then start painting it on. And stick close to the raised areas and the uh, rounded off areas like elbows, shoulders. You want to work around the slab of meat because you want the eye to be drawn to the shadow recesses and to see the contrast between the high point of our little highlight skin with the underneath. Try to fade it as much as possible, but if it's too bright and it's getting too thick on the edge of your brush, then uh, don't worry about it. Tone it down in the uh, next step. Okay, so there we go. That creates a very awesome looking highlight for our, our guy's skin. Look at that. That is really cool. Next thing what we're going to do is shade the skin one more time, but this time we're going to thin our Raikland Flesh Shade with some water. And before we do that, actually, we're going to... You're going to take the rest of your concoction, your skin highlight mix, and you're going to help his mount out just a little bit. Give him a little something. Who's a good boy? Who's a good Morn Fang? There. 
Look for any exposed skin and just touch on it a little bit with the highlight. Okay. Water, Rayclan Flesh Shade. I usually just like to mix or thin down in the top of the lid here. Some people don't like to do that, um, but I'm, I figure I'm just using water. I'm not using another paint, so it's okay. You don't have to put it on your wet palette. And then just paint it onto the skin to tie in your highlight color. Beautiful. I don't know why they made Bugman's glow so pink. Such a pink color. Let's give the mount a little something. A little something, something. Done. Now if you want, you can add tattoos to your guy. Ogre tattoos, just use thin down black paint, Abaddon black. Uh, I am going to hold off on that though. What I'm going to do instead is paint on some blood effects. So I'm using Tamiya Clear Red X27. I'm also using just a touch of Abaddon Black. Mix them up together and what you get is a fantastic looking coagulated blood. Do not use too much Abaddon Black. I'm going to use just enough to tint the red and put like little black uh, sca um, oh gosh, what's the, what's the word, what's the term? Little black clots of blood. So like GW's tribe. Uh, just like GW's tribe, my guys have bloody hands. They dip their hands into blood on the eve of battle, but um, mine is still fresh looking, rather. So maybe not the eve of battle, maybe like right before the battle starts. Uh, if, I just noticed in the skull right here, he's got uh, it's a little tie around his, his eye socket to hold the skull right there and to the wood. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of Morn Fang Brown and just color that in for a second. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Carrack Stone again and see if I can find, where did I put my Carrack Stone? There we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint some some uh, wood grain lines onto the club. This is an optional thing and it doesn't have to be Carrack Stone, it could be any of the lighter colors. Let me back up a little bit. I'm just doing vertical lines down. So another of the lighter cream colors would be Ushapti Bone, Screaming Skull, Anything like that. There's no, there's no set rule really on what the grain color should be. It's basically whatever you feel is the right color. I feel like Carrick Stone is just light enough, which is a perfect complement to do the wood grain with. Okay, now that that's done, again we're going to look to Administratum Gray to do the gray highlights on the club. So again I'm using my fine detail brush but just like with the fur if you want you can do a dry brush or you could do a fine detail brush just depends on what's the what is the effect you're going for and what I'm trying to do is you can see from what I'm painting I'm trying to get all of the lines. You'll notice that the Agrax Earthshade dried in the recesses. So what I'm doing is 
I'm simply trying to highlight up the ridged lines of the rock. You can either go with single strokes or do a feather effect. So here, this is my feather effect, and just kind of tapping the brush so that the edge of the paint comes along right there. If you want, you can do a second highlight. I think one is good. Usually two highlights is for character models or models that you really want to bump the presence of, but just doing single model kind of, kind of thing. And let's see, for the... Um, Othalon Gray is going to be our final edge highlight on the on the gray horns behind the saddle. So for this final highlight, what I'm really going to do is just focus on getting as much of the paint off of the brush beforehand so that when I'm painting these highlights on, we're really sticking to the edges because the edges are where we want to draw the eye to see the light kind of reflecting off of it. That is the effect that we want to go with. So you can see that I'm kind of drawing all these ridges as if the light were kind of bouncing off of the, the fine edge there. Othwan Gray is another great great highlight for that. And another great thing about highlighting is that you can decide for yourself how how much of a highlight you want. Once you see it, you might think, ah, I could still, I could stand to go a little brighter. And you can go back with even another color, like Skull White, if you want, to get an even brighter final highlight effect. I usually think that, in, um, Instead of going all the way up to Skull White, I think Ultuan Gray is a great top highlight. Skull White is so, or White Scar, I guess now is so, um, it's so shockingly white. And I've never been able to find a Skull White that is a good consistency in the paint pot for me. For some reason, every time I use White Scar, it always, the pigment always separates from the chemical in the pot, and then it just doesn't come out well for me. Ultuan Gray is nice and nice and thick and bright. Like when I use it, I feel like it's it's a nice bright white color. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same thing back here. Again, we're using the using like a feathered kind of breaststroke to give us the effect that we want. And if it ever comes on too thick, you've got two options. You can either go back and uh, use the color before, which was I believe Administratum Gray, or you can add some more of this highlight color around it to kind of blend it in seamless. Okay, and that's usually where I'll end it for the tusks here on the back. Just again want to check the transition of the colors, make sure that it's nice and smooth and you don't have anything that sticks out like a sore thumb.
Okay. okay. There you go. Let's pull back a little bit and another Martian. Last thing we're going to do is highlight the trousers. So we're going to use rust gray. I must say I am particularly fond of this uh, denim jean effect. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of feathering some brush strokes on where I think this, the, the fabric would be stretching the most. So right here, where the light would be catching it, it would be stretching right under the, the his backside, we'll say. And right up at the top where the sackcloth kind of folds over onto his uh, onto the front. Back here. Feather, feather, feather. It's like an optical illusion with feathering, which I think is great. Like it's not just one, it's not blended and it's not just one paint stroke, one hard edge highlight. It's a bunch of little paint strokes that kind of give the eye a very pleasant effect to look at. Okay. Once you've got both sides, you kind of take a look at it and see, hmm, is it too bright? Do I want to tone it down a little? If you do, you just go back down with Dark Reaper and start at the shadowed edges. So down here under the saddle, say I thought it was too bright and I want to tone it down. And you just feather up. Feather up. And there you have it. What a great model. Fun to paint. Devastating on the field. Really cool looking. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Actually, let's see if... The last thing we want to do is give this guy some, some eyeballs with Averland Sunset. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous models. Beautiful. So much detail, too. This is one of the kits. These are one of those kits that I just packed with things to look at. I remember when the, yeah, when the Iron Blaster came out. Everybody was like, oh my gosh. There's so much extra bits of detail on it. We're just going to try to dot the eye on the other side. You gotta find your angle, dot the eye. Then, if you make a mistake, like I did on this side, you can just go back with some black and um, paint over. And that's good because black is also going to be your color to paint the little slash. So we're going to do a vertical notch right down the center. Boom. Yeah. Nice. Boom. Nice. There you have it, folks. Your Mornfang Calvary ready to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Latest players.